Thank you very much, Ruth, and uh, President Meta, President Mawa, and of course, Vice President Carbonier, um, Dr. Mitchell, uh, dear Rotarians and ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for this opportunity. Um, in particular, as a former Rotary scholar, I am so honored to be at this event. I would like to begin with a quote. On August 6, 1945, it was a beautiful morning. At 8.15 a.m., after my father and my sister already left for work, one nuclear bomb was dropped on us. And instantly, thousands of people were incinerated and the rest were seriously burned and injured. The city turned into a hell. In three sentences, um, Hiroshi Iso, a citizen of Hiroshima, bluntly describes the destruction of his city by a nuclear weapon. That day in Hiroshima, and of course two days later in Nagasaki, buildings were eviscerated, corpses um, measured public spaces, and, and streets ran with rivers of blood. For decades after the atomic bombings, families beyond count suffer the dire human health ramifications of nuclear fallout. These are the catastrophic consequences of the use of nuclear weapons. Now, it is said that it is a curse to live in interesting times. And we live in very interesting times. Our world faces multiple global challenges from, of course, climate change, to ensuring equitable and sustainable development for all, uh, to the COVID-19 pandemic, of course, that continues to ravage communities across the globe. Yet the dangers posed by the continued existence of nuclear weapons must rank amongst the most urgent of these challenges. This is for one simple reason. Nuclear weapons remain the only weapon with the potential to eliminate all life on the planet. As uh, UN Secretary General Guterres said, humanity has acquired the power to bring about its own extinction. And we have come perilously close to unleashing that power on multiple occasions. The 14,000 nuclear weapons in arsenals today are almost all vastly more powerful than the bombs dropped on Hiroshima and Nagasaki. It has been estimated that a so-called limited nuclear war could create a global famine, resulting in the death of hundreds of millions. And any use of nuclear weapons would unleash a humanitarian catastrophe to which no country could adequately respond. And the death and destruction of a nuclear detonation will linger far longer than the sounds it would take to um, annihilate thousands. Yet despite knowing all of these, uh, the possession of nuclear weapons persists. I am therefore grateful to the International Physicians for Prevention of Nuclear War and its partners, as well as the International Community of the Red Cross, and to, of course, Rotary International for arranging this event. It is an opportunity to have an honest conversation about nuclear weapons and their role in today's world, to talk about why they no longer inspire the society-wide terror they induced during the Cold War in the age of duck and cover and fallout shelters, because they should. I did not come here today to lecture you um, or unnecessarily scare you. I just simply want to remind this diverse audience that the dangers posed by nuclear weapons are very real and not receding. Um, through a combination of luck and the judgment of brave men and women, we have not seen another use of nuclear weapons, but we cannot rely on luck and bravery forever. The COVID pandemic has taught us that seemingly low probability events can actually occur with little warning, but with catastrophic global effect. The terror, nuclear terror of the Cold War saw millions marching in protest. The close calls in Cuba and elsewhere produced hard-won lessons 
including the shared understanding um, as articulated by President Reagan and General Secretary Gorbachev, that a nuclear war cannot be won and must not be fought. Humanity reached common agreement on the need for a world free of nuclear weapons. Following the Cold War's end, we made great strides towards this goal. Nuclear arsenals were drastically reduced, but up to 80% in some cases. And global repugnance against nuclear testing is deeply embedded. Regions in the world pronounce themselves as being free of nuclear weapons. Yet the end of the Cold War seemingly endowed the world with one very dangerous falsehood, that the threat of nuclear war was a thing of the past. And nothing could be more wrong. As Secretary General Guterres said just a few days ago, these weapons are not yesterday's problem, they remain today's threat. Today, the great gains of the past 30 years are being reversed. Relationships between countries that possess nuclear weapons are increasingly antagonistic. They are engaged in an arms race to improve the stealth, speed, and accuracy of nuclear weapons. And dangerous rhetoric about the usability of nuclear weapons is being heard for the first time since the 1980s. Transparency and dialogue are absent. Military competition is prioritized over diplomacy and multilateral cooperation. So for the first time in nearly 40 years, we may see an expansion in the total number of nuclear weapons. And today's risks are complicated. This is no longer the two horse race of the Cold War. There are more players and regional nuclear crisis. The nexus between emerging technologies, new domains in cyber and also outer space and nuclear weapons has exposed new dangerous vulnerabilities. It is a fluid international environment where guardrails have either been eroded or are completely absent. The risk of a nuclear weapon is being used, most likely due to misperception or miscalculation, is as, as high as it has ever been. We are drifting towards confrontation and the chance of escalation beyond the nuclear threshold is far too real. So such a laundry list of risk poses one obvious question. What can be done? I believe this event, um, we have a unique combination of passion, commitment, expertise, and perhaps most important, reach. It is time to leverage these advantages in um, confluence to get the world back on the road to its shared goal of the elimination of nuclear weapons. A first step is to work together to broaden what I have attempted today to remind our neighbors, colleagues, friends, and social media followers that the threat posed by nuclear weapons is growing. We need to remind them that a nuclear war will affect us all, no matter where we live or what side of the political fence we find ourselves on. And we need to encourage them to listen to the experts, to understand the gravity of what is at stake. We need to remind ourselves that arms control and disarmament are not utopian ideals, but have always been real tools of security. And above all, we need people to act, to raise their voices in support of common sense, really, and a safer and more secure world. Around the same time as the uh, birth of nuclear weapons, the United Nations was founded. As the um, preamble states, it was established by we the peoples to save succeeding generations from the scourge of war. Now, three quarters of a century is far too long to have dwarfed in the shadow of the mushroom cloud. It is time for we the peoples 
to take action to prevent any use of nuclear weapons and to bring about their complete elimination. And of course, the United Nations stands ready to help and work with Rida peoples however it can. I thank you so much for your attention. Back to you, Ruth.